But like I said after the game, great job going up there and sort of asserting who we are as a football program, okay? People expect us to win, but they also expect us to play down a little bit when we go away from home or to play somebody that we're supposed to beat. Uh, they also, some people expect that as well. So move on to the next challenge, okay? That is Notre Dame, okay? Notre Dame. Uh, last year, felt like that was probably, if you had to take one game on our schedule, we didn't play well, well as, a, as a group, totally, as a group. Special teams, we had breakdowns, okay? Offensively, we did not, never did get on track. Defensively, yards were okay, but probably let them score a little bit too much. Well, they won seven points, went back on the kickoff team. But we didn't play as well as we did the rest of the year, is my point. Right. Um, they're going to be prepared. It's a big game. Uh, it's an 8 o'clock national t TV game. Herb Street's here. Uh, Brett Musburger's here. Who else? Heather Cox is here. Okay, so they got all the primetime people here. So it's an opportunity to show who we are. The farther we go, we're the number 10 ranked team in the nation right now. We moved up one slot. That's in both holes. So we're a top 10 football team after week two. Okay? That's after week two. But the stakes get higher the farther we go. And there's a big stake in this one, guys. There's a big stake. You want to put your hand in there and have an opportunity to play for a national championship or even talk about it or even be in the conversation. Okay? We got an ante up right here on this one. Got an ante up. Because after that, we get in the Big Ten season. So regardless of what we do in the Big Ten season, we got to get to the championship game. That's the goal there. Got to win the out-of-conference season first. That's the focus and that's the goal. After last week's victory over Central Michigan, the Spartans welcome longtime rival Notre Dame into East Lansing for another shot at a ranked opponent. Although Michigan State has beaten the Irish three out of the last five years, for the Spartans, the road to a championship season begins with reclaiming the megaphone trophy. I tell a lot of people who ask me about the Notre Dame series that I never had a, a bad experience against Notre Dame. There were a lot of fun moments. Um, you know, the 98 game was a game where we could just do absolutely nothing wrong. And then the 99 game, it was such a stalemate. Uh, both teams were having um, a problem breaking that stalemate at the 10-10 tie. You know, we came out with a huge win uh, and we just kept the ball rolling. And even in the teams that have, have come, taken the field for Michigan State since I've been gone have kept that momentum going. And it's just been such an exciting series. That has transformed or, or uh, carried over into the Mark D'Antonio era. And we all know about the Little Giants play and, and a lot of those other exciting moments between the two schools. So this has been a tremendous, tremendous series to watch. Well, I guess uh, growing up, you know, you always know of, of Notre Dame and Michigan State, um, you know, growing up in Midwest and, and watching Big Ten football. Uh, and they played so many great games over the years. Uh, it's just become such a tra tradition and a rivalry. I never really realized how special it was to really play in the, the game. Uh, it's been brutal battles. It's, uh, it's that thing where it's kind of like a homecoming week, I feel like, because this whole week it's, it's, it's Notre Dame. Uh, it's, it's a big, big time game nationally, media, I mean, everything it goes into it. Winning this game against Notre Dame, regardless of what their record is or where they stand, you know, on a national stage, you, you have to guard against not getting too high or too low as a player. But on the other hand, there are big games that you come to big schools like this to play in, and this is definitely one of them. We prepare all year, summer, summer conditioning, winter conditioning, all those things. And we remind ourselves that we got to play Notre Dame in the fall, and we got to play Michigan in the fall. So it's one of those big games for us, and uh, you know we don't—we're not scared to stress the importance of it. And um, obviously, it's not a Big Ten opponent, but it's—it's it's very much like a Big Ten game, um, you know. And it's kind of the first measuring stick of uh, of how we're going to be the rest of the season because Notre Dame always brings a good team, um, and we kind of measure ourselves off of that game to see, you know, kind of where we're at and going into Big Ten play. The only way or the best way to to bring positive attention to your program is to win and when you have the national stage and everybody watching in prime time this is a tremendous way to, to keep that energy going and I think Mark D'Antonio has done a good job uh, of letting his guys know that there is huge opportunity here if, if you're willing to seize it. When you want to be in the best bowl game possible, the Rose Bowl, you got to beat the best teams and, and Notre Dame's the first one on our schedule that we know every year is going to bring a solid team uh, and, and that's the way it is around here with Notre Dame and Michigan. You know, those are, those are the two games you got to win to have bragging rights for the next year. 
just makes the next year so much better. Um, being able to walk through the uh, football building and see that trophy that we have it, and just to know that we're the ones defending it the next year. All right, quote of the day. Larry Caper, birthday boy, 21 years old. Okay, hey, what, do what do you got for us? What do you got for us? Forget yesterday, it's already forgotten. Don't sweat tomorrow, you have a met. Instead, open your eyes and your heart to a truly precious gift today. Thank you. You think about going into this game, you know, you guys got to bring your edge. And, and today after practice, I think from what was the statements made this morning and just watching film of ourselves is you individually need to beat, or, uh, beat Nor Notre Dame today. And then after practice, yes or no answer, okay? Yes or no answer. And so, you know, the thing is, go back to the basics. As we always talk about in this room, right up there, and it'll stay up there. And we only got, you know, the three things, assignment, LT, a little bit different for you, but assignment, do you know what to do, okay? And then execution, can you physically get it done, whether it's pad level, aim points, those things. The finish part is my focus today, okay? I want you guys to finish everything, okay? I want you to finish runs, finish blocks, and run to the edge and you guys make plays, okay? You're you awesome. set the tempo. You guys set the tempo today for practice, okay? Let's be the pace setters. And like I said, if we're not, if we don't have the pace about us, the team period's not gonna have the pace. Coming into the 2012 season, there was uncertainty of whether the Spartan offense could complement their more experienced defense. But after the first two games, the offensive line's incredible performance has made a rookie quarterback look like a three-year starter and an unknown running back an early Heisman discussion. Although the position gains few accolades, for the big men, playing in the trenches is the best practice for life. Yeah, I think being an offensive lineman really helps you after football in life. No one's gonna be cheering you on if you get a promotion and you're gonna get knocked down and you just have to get right back up. And, Offensive linemen, you learn to do that. You know to you know do do the right things over and over again. You know, and you can't mess, miss a beat. And if you do, you just got to get up and do it again. I, I think when you invest yourself in other people, uh, like you do on the offensive lineman, you get the most out of life. I, I think that's the most important thing you can do. You gotta you gotta have uh, coaches talk about you know you gotta play out of controlled anger, and uh, you just have to have that you know that that trust and that the guy next to you that he's gonna get his job done. And uh, you just you gotta be relentless. You know you have to have pride in yourself. You have to have pride in your team. You have to trust the guy next to you, and you gotta love the game. And if you love the game, then things will happen. You know, each play is, uh, you're, you're never taking the play off. You know, uh, you know, that's why they call it the trenches. You know, you, it's the nitty gritty. You know, you gotta get, you know, you gotta, you know, use your hands, your knees, you know, you know, dig in the dirt, you know, just to try to get that guy moved or, you know, just to, you know, get up to the next level. So, uh, you know, you're always on the edge of your seat. When you play a team like Notre Dame and it's Michigan State against Notre Dame, especially at night in Spartan Stadium on ABC, it's just extra gravy. You know, it's I could play them right now, like out outside in the back. You've been hearing about Notre Dame ever since you were five years old. It was one of the first college football teams that was uh, talked about. You know, when you were growing up, and uh, it's a huge rivalry for us. Uh, last year we went to their stadium; they kind of gave it to us. And uh, this year, we kind of want to give it back to them as they come here.
perfect night for football, and what a matchup. A traditional rivalry. It's the Spartans and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. You know, 2-0, oh, you start your back-to-back, -back, your home games at home under the lights, so there's a lot of hype and anticipation about this ball game, so it should be a good one tonight, George. This will be seen and heard all around the world. First possession either way in the football game. Wilson's under center now with Wood deep behind him. Tyler Eifert's in motion left to right. Hand off to Wood. Hit in the backfield. From the corner, it's Johnny Adams. Four wideouts now on third and 11. Nowhere to go. Wilson hands the ball instead on a little delay to Theo Riddick. And you heard Jim Miller say there was nowhere to run, and there wasn't. So it's fourth down now at 10. Tony Lippin and Benny Fowler, wide side left, bump to the right. Lady on to the right of Andrew Maxwell with the shotgun. Here's the snap. Andrew steps up and fires on a slant. He is incomplete. The pass intended for Benny Fowler up around the 30. Looked like he was going to grab it, but on the way down, he lost it. Second down 10 for the Irish at their 49. Quick throw, Golson. Left side is caught by Robbie Toma. He's got a first down. Golson by himself with the shotgun. Second and nine and a half. Rolls to his right. Eludes some pressure. Winds up, throws all the way back to his left at the goal line. And a catch is made. They threw a flag, but Notre Dame has scored. One set back, it's way beyond. Maybe I starts to the middle, cuts it outside. Going to turn the Jets a bit, jukes it, takes the shotgun snap, feels some heat, rolls right, throws on the run, it's caught out of the 40 for a first down. He has Palazzetti and Le'Veon on the straight eye behind him. Play fakes, now Andrew, guns it left sideline. Mike Sandler will hold for Dan Conroy at the left hash, a 44-yard field goal try for Dan Conroy. It's on the way, and he missed it. Wide right, second and 10, Notre Dame at their 42. They lead seven to nothing here in the first. The big tight end, Tyler Eifert, starts in motion, left to right. Shotgun snap to Golson, unloads it left side, it's incomplete. Pressure that time and really nowhere to throw it. First and 10, Notre Dame at their 49. Golson runs to his right. Reverse handoff to Atkinson. He's got speed. He's at the 40. Now the 30 cuts back to his right at the 25. Shotgun snap. One pump fake. Now rolls left. Looking to throw. Now he'll run to the five. Heads for the left pylon. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Spartans take over at their 25. Andrew Maxwell under center. Nice play fake by Andrew. Screens it left side. The screen to big Dion Sims. Le'Veon motions out of the backfield. They'll go to him left side. Good throw, fine catch. Le'Veon to the 40. And he's back a little bit closer to the 50, or the 40 rather, so that would make it a 50 yard try. Here's the put down and the boot. It is long enough, it's good. That'll give you a lift. Dan Conroy from way downtown. A 50 yard field goal. And it's now Notre Dame 14, the Spartans three, with three and 43 to play in the half. Play fakes to Wood. Hands deep in the pocket. Hit as he throws, it's a wobbler over the middle. Intercepted, intercepted by Max Bulla. Falling down at the 45 yard line of MSU. That thing was wobbling. And the Spartans got the extra effort from Max Bola. They pick it off. We'll take a break as time runs out here in the first half. Bring him up. First thing we've got to do, guys, we've got to be able to win up front. We've got to win up front on offense. Okay? We've got to win up front on offense, period. We've got to win up front on defense. We cannot let the quarterback break contain. we got the edge. we got to keep the edge. All right? Big beep shots down the field. We're one play away from catching fire. We have not caught fire yet. We've not caught fire yet. Okay? So we're one play away from catching fire. Explosive play on offense, big play on defense, whatever it is. Okay? So we've got to challenge each other to stay up. And who's going to make the play? It's not, it is not easy. Okay? All right? So get your head up, pull together, get ourselves ready to go. Okay? Make good decisions and play to win. And do not doubt yourself. Okay? Make the plays, make the catches, and we don't get 
back in the huddle. Let's go. Right? One score away from being 14 to 10. Let's go. Let's go. Call him up. I'm just right here. Let's go. 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 Let's go.